Yes, the measuring part was the tape. The work of art was a tapestry. Now, David, you have all sorts of wonderful hobby horses from time to time that, uh, that you've shared with us, but you're actually hopping on a horse tonight. I am, in real life. Uh, well, I'm talking about real horses. And, in fact, the three velocities uh, of horses and uh, where these words come from. Now, starting at a very leisurely pace, I'll talk about trot, which comes from mid-German, trotten, which means to walk. It's also the source of the word tread. Now, in the 1300s, the poet and writer Geoffrey Chaucer wrote Canterbury Tales, which is a series of uh, vignettes, if you like, about certain pilgrims on their way to the tomb of St Thomas the Becket, also St Thomas Becket. And the pace that they took was described as being a Canterbury gallop. But that was shortened into canter, which is the source of the word canter, of course. Now, moving on to the last of the speeds, and that's gallop, which comes from mid-French, which is galopé, which means to hit or to run fast. Also, Flemish is wallopé, with a W, which is the source of the word wallop, which is the sound that racing hooves made as they thud into the earth. It's a race ball! <laughs> And you are first past the post. Well done, David. Thank Good you. stuff as we move into our next letters game. And, uh, David, that's you to choose. Um, can I have a consonant, please? You can, thank you. Let's start with G. And a vowel. E. And a consonant. Q. <laughs> Great. And um, a vowel, please. I. And another vowel, please. E. And uh, one more vowel. You're waiting for that. You're <laughs> so waiting for that special one. Okay. A. I'm going to give up. Um, and consonant, please. N. And another. R. And another one, thanks. And last letter, S. Oh, where was that U? <laughs> As you said, David, you were giving up on the U, but hopefully you didn't give up altogether. Uh, no, I managed a uh, seven. Seven is good. Tanya? Seven for me as well. Let's hear yours first. Searing. And yours, David? I'm um, searing. Would you verify with each other? Searing play, David. <laughs> Searing must have been that pace of the galloping. A great play. Good uh, seven. I could only add to that with an anagram erasing. So, good sevens to be found, and Tanya and David both got that score. Let's have a few more letters now, and uh, Tanya, what would you like? Lily, I'll have a consonant to start. Thank you. H and vowel. E and another consonant. C and vowel. A and a consonant. S and a vowel. E and a consonant. B and a vowel. A. And lastly, a consonant. And last letter, T. And here's the clock. Teachers. Rhyming. They rhyme, and they're both good for seven, and I couldn't find another. So, well done. Good play. Good stuff. Absolutely straight to the best for both Tanya and David, and the best is seven points each. Back for some numerical manipulation now, and uh, David, it's you to choose the numbers. Um, Ali, can I have um, uh, two large and four small? Thanks, David. Two large and four small. And our numbers. Ten. Six. Seven, another six, and the two large, 50, and 75, and the target to reach 815. Thanks, Lily. Here we go.
David, how close did you get with that mix? Uh, not very close at all. Not within the scoring range? No, I'm afraid not. Okay. Tanya? Not for me either, Richard. No luck? No. Well, Lily, was this a uh, particularly tough mix? Yeah, it was, it was pretty tricky. Um, I can talk you through it, though. Now, um, 50 by the 6 is 300, and 75 by the 7 is 525. Add them together is 825. Subtract the 10 is 815. Very nicely done, but no score, unfortunately, for Tanya or David. So the scores remain at 20 for Tanya. David is on 33. We're heading for another break. And your word mix this time is Mule Lion. And the clue, it's on the floor. See you after this.